All right, we're finally getting close. I've got the parts all cleaned up, ready to paint, masked off. There isn't much masking to do on here. I just have some little spots over where the axles go. And then got my black paint here. That's what I'll be starting with to do the frame, trucks, fuel tank, and all that. Got my old reliable testers cheap airbrush and this nice little compressor here. And then just whatever materials I can find to prop things up if needed. And to keep the bottle clear now and then, a little wire. So now I can get started on painting. There isn't a lot of room for adjustment with this airbrush, but it's good enough to get a fine spray and that's all I need. So now I'll just get started. I'm using Scale Coat 2 paint, which just has a really nice quality coverage. I've gotten to like it a lot. I've got the underside coating on there. In a little bit I'll flip those over and um, spray them from the top. And you'll notice on the main body I didn't do any masking. That's because this paint dries so fine that whatever overspray there is around there, that'll just paint right over and look perfectly smooth once I do the second color. And while that's drying I went ahead and plugged that paint bottle with the wire so that it doesn't get clogged. So now you just start right away when it's time to do the other side. Well, I flipped everything over, gave it a second coat, and it all looks good. There are just a couple little places, especially in the trucks around there. The deep detail, I'll have to touch those up with a brush because it's just too hard to get in there with an airbrush or spray paint while not getting enough paint on everything else for it to sag down and all that. But I should be able to give the frame parts at least their finishing coat in about a day so then I can reassemble the frame and at the same time I'll give the body its coat of the um, Pennsylvania dark green. Now the interior should be easy. Every photo I've ever seen of an Alco FA PA interior has shown it to be light gray. So I'll just hit it with some primer and be done with it. And it should look perfectly fine. And I'll just paint a few of the little accents and details in there to make it look a little better, stand out a bit more. This paints enamel, but it dries fast enough because of accelerants that it won't harm the plastic. Between airbrushings, or after you're finished airbrushing, you really want to clean out the bottle, clean out the tools. Because if you get to it right away, it's really easy to get all the paint out of there because it's still wet. It only takes a few minutes to do it. But if you let it dry in there, well, it's pretty much impossible. I tried to chip that layer out of there. It's not coming. It's just something to remember. Always keep it clean. Alright, the black paint's had about a day now. And the coating's set up real nice. Didn't need any touch up on the engine. And one of the nice things about this is the only thing I had to mask off was the fuel tank. So now I can get started on that and hopefully be done with this soon. Well, the body's all painted, turned out well. So now I'm going to get on to doing the clear coat of the frame parts since the paint's all set and dry and ready to go. Now for this I really like using these Model Master spray cans because the shine is just really even and nice. It's easy to use and it dries thin enough that it doesn't obscure any detail. All it takes is a light coat and it dries really fast too. About 20 minutes and it's ready to handle. Well, paint's all dry, turned out real nice, so now I can move on to doing the decals. I've got a tray of warm water already here. Uh, micro scale decals, which are really nice quality. 
and then Microscale includes this little reference with each decal set which will help out quite a bit. I've also got some photos to go off to so that'll help me to get all the decals right exactly where I want them and make this look as good as possible. When working with fresh decals in warm water I like to go about 45 seconds to a minute for small ones and about a minute and a half to two minutes for large ones. That'll wash off most of the adhesive, make them easier to work with, and the adhesive won't leave any markings behind when it's done. I've got most of the main decals in place now. Right here up front is where it can get kind of tricky, is getting the decals around large details like this one. I actually had to cut this front part into about three different pieces to make that all fit. And to get everything set down properly, I'll be using Walther's Solvacet solution. Just spread that onto the decals and it will form to any detail. I've only had it on there for a couple minutes, but you can see it's already starting to do some work. The decals are forming over the details. And there will be some bubbles underneath when this is all dry, so those will have to be popped and broken and then uh, the solution will have to be applied a second time to really get it to all conform perfectly. Well, that's all the decal work for this side. This is also a really good time to do the touch-up paint and any extra little accents. I think that turned out real good, so now it's time to get on to the other side. Alright, all the decals are now in place. I've done the touch-up painting around there. And I also painted the cab area gray. So now I'm just waiting for a little bit of that paint to dry and this will be ready for the final clear coat. And I can finally get to reassembling this whole thing. Alright, painting, coating, and everything is all finished. So all that is left is the reassembly. Well, I've managed to create a circuit that will make it so that this exhaust fan will run in the same forward direction no matter which way the engine is running. I used my typical constant lighting circuit of three forward, three back diodes, and then I attached an additional diode to the beginning of each end. These both go to the same terminal on the motor, and then the other terminal goes to the where I'll be soldering the light bulbs. But here it is working. I think this will be pretty cool. Instead of hooking this up to the motor in the engine, I'll be using a large resistor on one end of this circuit to give it the current that it needs to run. That way I won't be taking any voltage off the motor. One more little thing I decided to add is a light for the cab interior. That one will just be run directly off the track power. It's a 12 volt light. And I have that glued into the top, so that kind of makes it easy to place and it should look pretty good when it's lit up. Just a quick test to see how it looks. And I think that turned out looking really good. And I've done some modification to my fan and light circuit. It looks like a mess but it actually works real well and now the lights are isolated from the fan so they won't have that little bit of light turned on in the wrong direction and everything will still work just the way I want. And here's my wiring. It's all wired up. Looks kinda messy. My work on wiring isn't exactly the cleanest. And I actually glued the circuit to the side of the body just to keep it out of the way. Everything seems to fit just fine. So let's see how it works. It takes about 7 volts to start up the fan. Not quite the low voltage I was hoping for, but at least it works. Headlights working, cab light works, runs smooth. And the reverse light works too. And that fan is spinning in both directions just the way it's supposed to. This has turned out to be one cool engine. 
It is almost done. Everything looks good inside, so I went ahead and screwed the body on. And I painted those universal couplings black so that they won't stand out so much. And used just a touch of super glue to hold the fuel tank in place. And that really improves the look of this thing considerably. One final touch I'm adding is full window glass all the way around. I'm using the A and B glass kit for the Atherin PA1. Most of the windows are the right size, but the windshield has to be modified quite a bit. I just kind of filed along the edges slowly until that piece there fit properly, and I'll do the same for the other one. But the rest should be easy. Getting all the glass in place is proving to be a little more difficult than I expected. Some of the windows are a little too large, others are a little too small. The ones that are too large, I'm filing down sh them down to shape, and then kind of pressing them in place a little and using the capillary action from some very carefully applied liquid plastic glue. For the ones that are too small, I'm using a thicker tester's window glue, I'm putting that around the edges of the window frame and then carefully placing the actual glass in there. And that seems to be working pretty well. All the windows are in place and now I've added the final touch of a couple windshield wipers. I just made these out of some flattened .015 inch brass wire, filed them to shape a bit, glued them in place, and painted them chrome silver. And I think those turned out looking really nice on there. And with that, this thing is now completely finished. Running along nice and smooth, pulling a set of my Pennsylvania Railroad passenger cars. I think it looks great doing it. There's a lot of work to get here, but I really think that this has turned out to be one of my best completed projects.